Of the 22 years that I've lived here, I've spent 14 in complete solitude. To live in the midst of Alaska's extreme lack of spirit, day and night, year after year, one is in desperate need of God's grace so as not to destroy oneself spiritually. Segundo was born on November 18, 1906, in Mancilla Mayor, Spain, a town in the province of León. He was a strong and intelligent boy, full of vitality and very outgoing. He was the eldest of 12 siblings. He was an extraordinary young man, very fervent. So he thought to himself, I want to surrender my life to Jesus Christ as a missionary. Which is the most difficult mission? That's what he asked himself. And he was told the most difficult mission is Alaska. There were very few missionaries in Alaska, but that's where he went. He lived so many adventures in the tundra, the dogs, the wolves, and the dog sleds. Once he sunk into the ice and his stomach froze, but he didn't die. The Eskimos covered him with a bear pelt until he began to thaw out little by little, but he could have died there. And another time, he went to open a can of kerosene and it exploded. The entire house was destroyed, but he was left standing there with his hand up like this, but nothing happened to him. And he has thousands and thousands of stories like those, and he tells them in the books he wrote. Once you have truly begun a friendship with Jesus, it's easy to deepen and develop that friendship. He gives his all. I live right next to the tabernacle. My bed is separated from him by a mere partition. My relationship with Jesus Christ has somehow become so profound that I perceive death as a great liberation. I have a very impatient temperament, so I'm always impressed by the way he exercised the virtue of patience. The Eskimos have a completely different character and way of thinking, because they say now, and that now can mean in three days, or a week, or a few months. But for me, now means yesterday, or at the latest, this very moment. And I think that was important for his sanctification on a human level. He also mentioned how other Jesuits had difficulties in adapting to that Eskimo character, because it is so tranquil and calm. He wrote a curious story about feeding the dogs. He kept the dogs far from the house because they barked so much. And he fed them smoked fish, naturally, because that's what they had, smoked and cured salmon. And every night, he went to feed them. So one night, he said to the boy who helped him, let's go feed the dogs. So they went to the pantry, took a sack of fish, and carried it hundreds of meters away from the town. And Father Yorinti thought to himself, these dogs aren't barking, maybe they already ate. And the boy didn't say a word. He accompanied Father Yorinti, but he didn't say a word. When they got to where the dogs were, Father Yorinti said, these dogs have already eaten, did you feed them? The boy said, Yes. Why didn't you tell me? Because you didn't ask me. Imagine that with the temperament of a Spaniard. Although his desire was to die in Alaska, he spent the last years of his life in the west of the United States working with Hispanics. He died of cancer on January 26, 1989 in Spokane, Washington, and was buried on January 30th in Des Moines, Idaho, in a cemetery near the Rocky Mountains. The cemetery is reserved for Native Americans and missionaries who served Native Americans for more than 20 years. <laughs>